So, I beg to move uh, this resolution, sir. Whereas land is God's given right to the indigenous people, and whereas our leaders in the past had enacted a legislation, namely the Megalith Transfer of Land Regulation Act 1972, to prevent the alienation of land, and whereas rampant violation of the Act is taking place. Therefore, this House do now resolve to stop this gross violation of the Meghalaya Transfer of Land Revolution Act 1972. Motion moved. Now you may initiate discussion. Thank you, sir. Sir, as I have mentioned in my submission, that whereas land is a God-given right to the indigenous people, and whereas our leaders in the past had enacted legislation, namely the Meghalaya Transfer of Land Regulation Act, to prevent the alienation of land, and whereas uh, rampant violation of the Act is taking place. Therefore, sir, sir, I stand here to raise my serious concern about the most important issue of the indigenous people. I don't want to be blamed that by the future generation that I did not nothing to protect and safeguard the interests of the indigenous people. So, what an irony for those who claim to be broad-minded and have a mainstream thinking and who are trying to create a narrative that we are too conservative, narrow-minded, and not exclusive. So, I wonder how many of those who could, who could make it to this August House, and how many of those who could make it to the civil services if there is no special provision for the tribal community in the country in general and our state in particular. So we are asking the people to elect us in order to serve and protect their interests. Therefore, sir, as member of the Voice of the People Party, we will do anything at our disposal to ensure that the rights of the indigenous people are protected and also at the same time without compromising the constitutional rights of non-indigenous people who are residing in our state. Sir, I would like to remind this August House that land for a tribal does not only mean for him to make a living, but also has a deep cultural and historical connection. It is the bedrock of a sense of security and freedom from fear. It is an important part in the lives of the tribal people in the hills, and for them, it is a matter of life and death. They are so much attached to the land, and any attempt to displease and alienate them would amount to obliterating the tribal community and would certainly meet with fear resistance. So, on behalf of the present generation of the indigenous people, I must express my indebtedness to those who were instrumental in enacting the Meghalaya Transfer of Land Regulation Act in our state. We owe them for the far-sightedness which have been a blessing to us. However, sir, it is saddened to learn that current generation of political leaders have diluted the provisions of this act to satisfy their personal and political goal. Sir, so, the insertion of section 41E and F in the Meghalaya Transfer of Land Regulation Act 1971 by an amendment brought in 1991 ensure the rights of religious societies for transfer of land in their name. These sections relate to land proposed to be transferred for a place of public religious worship by any community or as burial or cremation ground. 
These two sections opened a door for non-tribals to purchase land in Meghalaya, which was a departure from the inherent character of the act. These sections were inserted by the state government on its own accord, as if the land belonged to it. So, the two sections also did not provide a scope for the engineers, communities, or the traditional heads to have any say in the transfer of land, resulting in the government having the liberty to permit a nation of land under these sections. So the implementation of the two sections has resulted in the loss of large amount of land to non-tribals. It has also given rise to the emergence of a new class of landowners who were from outside the state and brought in huge workforce uh, leading to an unabated uh, inflow, influx that was unprecedented in the last 50 years. Therefore, sir, I strongly feel and demand from the government that these two sections should be deleted. Sir, again, there was a new attempt to weaken the Meghalaya Transfer of Land Regulation Act. Recently, there was a proposal from one of the ministers in the state government to allow doctors from outside the state to buy land in Meghalaya to address the shortage of specialist doctors in the state. So this is very dangerous propositions and should not be considered at any cost. So even the decision of the government to allot land to the bureaucrats at the New Shillong Township is a clear violation of the Land Transfer Act. So I must mention here that the state cabinet took a decision on August 9, 2007 that the cabinet directed the Revenue Department to examine the feasibility of allotment of land to the professional, bureaucrats, etc., who could contribute to the development of the state. In pursuance of the cabinet decision dated 9 August 2007, the minister in charge of an affairs department based on the view of the revenue department approved the allotment of land of 45.01 acres in the New Shillong Township to the Civil Services Officers Housing Cooperative Society Limited. Accordingly, the Joint Secretary of an Affairs Department under her letter dated 18 August 2008 issued the allotment order for allotting 45.01 acres of land at rupees 19 lakhs 60,636 only. And the annual land revenue is fixed at rupees 494 per hectare. As such, the one time premium of rupees 19 lakh uh, 60,636 rupees in effect works out to one rupee per square foot. So, the transfer of land to the civil services officers housing cooperative. A society limited through a lease is illegal under the Meghalaya Transfer of Land Regulation Act 1971. Section 3 of the Act prohibits the transfer of land in Meghalaya by a tribal to a non-tribal or by a non-tribal to another non-tribal except with the previous uh, sanction of the competent authority. Section 2 of the Act, Section 2D of the Act defines transfer of land means conveyance of land of one person to another and includes gift, sales, exchange, mortgage, lease, surrender, or any other mode of transfer. Hence, the lease of government land to the new in New Shillong Township to the Civil Services uh, Officers Housing Cooperative Society Limited is a violation of Land Transfer Act because there is no provision in the Act. So, in Para 2, E of the Meghalaya Transfer of Land Regulation Act, it explains about the definition of a tribal. 
Tribal means a person belonging to any of the scheduled tribes pertaining to Meghalaya and as specified in the constitution, scheduled tribes of the 1950 as amended from time to time and for the purpose of this act shall also include Rabhas and Kashuris residents in Meghalaya. However, sir, it is very disheartening that there has been an attempt to misinterpret this very definition to encourage other tribal not belonging to Meghalaya to purchase land in Meghalaya on the pretext that they are included in the list of scheduled tribes of the 1950. And as a result of this misinterpretation, sir, lots of other tribals from other states are now purchasing land in our state especially in the southern parts of the state, which is clearly the incontravention of the act. So we know that the dictionary meaning of the word pertaining means to be connected with a particular subject's events or situation. And also the word specified, which is the passings of specify, means to explain or describe something clearly and exactly. So sir, we understand according to the definition Therefore, that no other tribal other than the tribes pertaining to Meghalaya, which is the Khasis and the Garos, we cannot consider Mizos, Nagas, as tribes pertaining to Meghalaya. So therefore, sir, we have seen how they are trying to dilute this, uh, this act, sir. So we cannot also deny the fact that huge areas of land have only been alienated in the name of development. Land was given to the Nehu, Negrims, ICAR, airport, factories, armed forces. But what have we received in return, sir? What have we received in returns? Have these institutions benefited the indigenous people? The answer is very clear, sir, and very simple, no. They have become an agent of, to, to facilitate the inflow of outsiders into our state only. Even the state government seems to not having any interest to ensure that these institutions should render maximum benefit to the local people. So, we have also lost large tract of land in the border area. In the border area bordering Meghalaya and Bangladesh. In the wake of this border fencing, we have also lost huge tract of land in the interstate border in the wake of the MOU signed between the government of Meghalaya and the government of Assam. So, sir, the observation of Honorable Supreme Court has further strengthened our claim that no land can be transferred to other people who is not a tribal belonging to Meghalaya, and that a tribal belonging to Meghalaya is only the Kasis and Garos, including the Kashwis and Rabhas, as mentioned earlier. So, sir, I would like to read a uh, few observations of the Honorable Supreme Court in this regard. Sir, in the case between Bersing versus Delhi Jail Board, sir, the court observed that if the privileges, if the special privileges or the rights granted to scheduled castes or scheduled tribes in a part of state, are to be made available in all the states and if such benefits are to be carried from state A to state B on migration, the mandate of Article 341, 342 would get compromised. So, another observation of the Supreme Court is that in so far as the state, the majority view is agreed with that a person who is recognized as a member of scheduled caste, scheduled tribes in his original state will be entitled to all the benefits of the reception under the constitution in that state only and not in other states. Union territories are not entitled to benefits of reception in the migrated state and union territory. I would also like to read out the case between Badharam in bracket D versus Jasaram. So this is related to the land. The appellant 
being a scheduled caste belonging to the state of Punjab and being an ordinarily and permanent resident of the state of Punjab cannot claim the benefit of scheduled caste in the state of Rajasthan for the purpose of purchase of land belonging to a scheduled caste person of state of Rajasthan, which was given to original allottee as scheduled caste landless. So another observation of the Supreme Court is that but so far as the present constitution stands, a member of the scheduled tribe going outside the scheduled area or tribal areas would certainly not be entitled to carry with him the privilege that he is entitled to when he is residing in a scheduled area or a tribal area. So, sir, this uh, court ruling vindicated the stand that we cannot allow the transfer of land in Meghalaya to other tribal, other than the tribal pertaining to Meghalaya. Sir, I would like to know, since there has been a rampant violation of Meghalaya Transfer of Land Regulation Act, I would like to know what action has been taken against those people who are involved in the selling away of our land to the people who are not covered by the Land Transfer Act, especially the same of Raj Marwet, who have voluntarily engaged in this illegal act. Moreover, sir, what action will be taken against those deputy commissioners who are willingly registered that these lands which are in direct contravention to the provision of the law? So I have many copies with me here which substantiated my claim. These are the, document, the documents that I have received about the purchase of land in the southern part of our state and which were involved by this same right of Merwet. So, so, so that uh, I will not be blamed that I just uh, charge anyone without any proof. So, sir, I would also like to express in a very categorical uh, term, sir, that when we talk about the issue of ownership of land, we did not try to separate it from the ownership of its wealth, including mineral and under the surface of our land. So this land, this has been vindicated by the landmark judgment of the Honorable Supreme Court. So in a judgment dated July 8, 2013, which was delivered by a bench led by Justice R.M. Lodha, comprising Justice J. Sheila Meshwar and Madan B. Lakur. The court observed that a Jenmi or the hereditary owner has exclusive right not only of the soil under his possession, but also the subsoil and minerals underneath the surface of his land." Unquote. So the court pointed to statutes such as Coking Coal Mines Nationalization Act 1972 and Coal Bearing Areas Acquisition and Development Act 1957, which only contains ex express provisions for acquisition of the mines and rights in or over the land for which coal is obtainable. It also said that even the Mines and Minerals Development uh, Regulation Act 1957 only regulates mining activities. The Act does not in any way purport to declare the property rights of the state in the mineral wealth, nor does it contain any provision divesting any owner of a mine of his property rights. So, if the understanding of the state of Kerala that in view of the provisions of the Mines and Mineral Development uh, uh, Regulation Act 1957, the property right is in mine stand transfer and best in the state, it would be wholly an unnecessary exercise on the part of the parliament to make laws such as the ones mentioned above dealing with the nationalization of mines, the judgment observed. Further, sir, the court pointed to the Atomic Energy Act 1962 and the Oil Field Regulation and Development Act 1947 and said both do not contain provisions declaring that the state has property rights over subsoil minerals held by private landowner. Even with regard to the uh, minerals which are greatly important and highly sensitive uh, in the context of national security and also the security of humanity, uh, like uranium. The Atomic Energy Act 1962 only provides under Section 5 for prohibition or regulation of mining activity in such mineral, the judgment observed. So, uh, while I di discuss the issues related to the need to protect the interests of 
the local indigenous people in terms of the Land Transfer Act, I must also mention here another need. The need to protect the poor and landless. Today we are witnessing, sir, some rich individuals possessing vast tracts of land as their private property. Persons who have money buy land as much as they can, sir, in the urban areas, semi-urban and rural areas, and the thirst for more land seems insatiable, sir. The poor and the landless have been reduced to mere tenants for the rest of their lives. Therefore, sir, it is high time that the government brings in certain law to curb this aberration and to ensure that the poor too can have a plot of land to build their homes or own some land. So according to the provisional data from the socio-economic and caste census uh, 2011 for rural India released in New Delhi on the 3rd July 2015, revealed a sorry state of affairs as far as the number of households that hold no lands is concerned. So the data reveals that out of 80 lakhs 43,000 896 households located in rural areas in the northeastern region, only 33 lakhs 6,326, that means 41 percent, have land, while 47 lakhs 37,457, 59 persons, households are landless. Across rural India, sir, there are 7 crores, 83 lakhs 78,173, 44 percent households with land and 10 crores 7 lakhs 77,240 56% households uh, Mr. Speaker, with sir, no land. I'd like to raise a point of order in the room that a private member may not read his speech but may refresh his memory by reference to the notes. No, sir, so I'm the honourable member is continuously reading from the notes. Uh, sir, I would like to request if the rules can be followed. Sir. So I'm not reading, sir. I'm just refreshing my mind. So, sir, when it comes to figures, I have to check, sir, because it is not right for me to just, because I think no one here will be able to remember, to memorize the numbers when the numbers are great, sir. Okay, so there is no harm for me, sir, I think, to, to look at the numbers in order to make sure that the numbers I have uh, given in the house is correct, sir. Try to show Tindu. Yeah, I'm coming to the conclusion, sir. So among the northeastern states, Sikkim sir, has the highest number of households with uh, land and from the total rural household of 88,723, there are 53, sir, uh, 1,399 or 60% of the household hold land, sir. So the state with the least number of household with land is Mizoram, followed by Meghalaya. Most of the land in Meghalaya is privately land, owned land, sir. Out of 485,913 households, there are only 1,16,723. That means 24% only whole lands in Meghalaya. So we used to feel proud of our uniqueness as far as the land holding system is concerned. And we used to claim that in Meghalaya, the, longs, the land belongs to the people. But, sir, when you look at the data, it speaks otherwise. Sir, land sailing is required in our state to reduce economic and opportunities disparities. Sir, to ensure that wealth is not concentrated in few individuals and to ensure that all citizens have access to appropriate um, means of subsistence and piece of land. Sir, so Article 38 of the Directive uh, Principle of State Policy talk about reducing the disparities in income, uh, status, amenities, opportunities, uh, etc. Sir. Further, the Article 39 of the Directive Principle of State Policy aims to prevent the concentration of wealth in a few people. As mentioned earlier, sir, uh, that land is a life. And there is a very popular saying that a tribal without a land is as good as debt only. So, sir, if there is no land selling, wealthy people uh, will purchase the entire village's worth of land. Land selling system will help 
put an end to landlordism practiced by large landowners and rich individuals. So this is a very issue, sir, a serious issue, sir. When it comes to land, we know it was told by the wall historian that one of the causes that drove the Jews to fight for their own state was their attachment to their ancient land. So, and on the 29 November 1947, when there was a resolution in the United Nations for the creation of a Jewish state, the Jewish people on this particular day, they prepare for a war. They told that war is inevitable for the Jewish people because if the vote is yes in the United Nations, the Arab people will declare war on us. And if the vote is no, we will have to declare war on the Arab people in order to achieve the goal. So when it comes, sir, therefore, to the identity, even names matters. Even names matters. So let me inform this August House that any community would love to prove his identity. David Green, when he was a scribe, he used to write news report. And at the end of the news report, he put his name, David Green. And when he looked and pondered about his name, he realized that no one would know that I'm a Jew. So therefore, everyone in the world should know that I'm a Jew. So he scratched the second name Green and put replaced with another one, Ben Gurion. From that day, he told that I'll be known as David Ben Gurion, who was the first Prime Minister of Israel. That is a kind of a mindset that the people are having in order to prove that they want to show their identity and their attachment of land is one of the reasons that make the Jewish to get the Jewish state. So, sir, with these few words, I would like to resume my seat and I would like to thank you once again for admitting this very, very important resolution, sir. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat>